What's going on, everybody? This is Bunny Muffins. I wanted to qualify for one of the tournaments for the competitive scene in TFT this week. And in order to do that, you need to be top 160 on the leaderboard. And after a few days of grinding, I am glad to say that we qualified for it. So we will be playing in that on January 14th. But I wanna tell you guys about my journey because it was a wild one. We actually incorporated everything we learned in the past couple of days. I wanna show you guys six games where it's a do or die situation because they take your rank snapshot at midnight on Monday. There are also a bunch of psychological games that you can play because you don't know what the final rank you need to qualify is. So let's get into the games. Unlike most other YouTubers, these are not going to be handpicked games. These are just simply going to be my past six games that I played. And the first one was a little rough. We're playing flex in all of these. You'll see that in this first game, we don't hit the desired unit that we want. In the second game, we take all the knowledge that we learned from our Kaisa video. After that, we're gonna get into some AP composition. So we have three ability power games where we go either Talia or Soraka. So that's a new comp that we're gonna get into. And then we also have this Jax game where justice is served even more so than in the Jax videos. Because remember how I said in that video, we do not negotiate with terrorists. Well, after you watch that game, you'll find out that that motto really paid off that time. We started our journey at 486 LP, and at that time, I thought I just needed around maybe 520, 540 LP to qualify for the tournament. But you'll come to notice that on the last day, it turns out a lot of people wanted to qualify for this, so the cutoff actually was around 580 LP. Let's start off with this game, though. So. Knife's Edge, Anima Squad, Sunfire Board. As we learned in the Duelist video, we love Knife's Edge for that, but in this game, I didn't really get a good start for that because I don't have any locket components. So I end up actually going for Sunfire Board here. Don't even consider Anima Squad Crest on this patch because it is just the worst augment. So I'm thinking right now, Sunfire into some sort of attack damage non-Duelist comp. There's probably other things you could do with the Knife's Edge because we have really good attack damage items. We have a bow, we have a glove, and we have a negatron. So you could do runons, you could do last whisper, but I think if you do something like a Samira, you'd much rather have the Sunfire board because you don't really want to frontline your Samira. So we're going to do that for now. We'll level up. We have the underground start. So, so far, looking good. When I woke up that day, I was like, okay, I just need a place maybe like gain 40 LP, maybe 50 if we're lucky. So we just need one first place and then we could just stop our climb right there. But we'll see if that actually happens in this game. Obviously you guys know I end up playing six games here, but let's, let's look at this with that attitude in mind. We're getting rocked in this fight, but that's kind of expected because we're playing underground. So it's not that big of an issue if we lose, we get three stacks and then we're kind of just chilling so far. We hit the KL2 here. I don't slam items yet. Maybe I should have. I kind of wanted to keep the Renekton and use him as my item holder because we've been smurfing with Renekton in the early game if we get him to two star, but that didn't happen quite yet. Looking back at this game, maybe we could have just slammed Duelist and just went with that because uh, we do, again, have really good attack damage items. Like we probably could have just built a Runons on our front line for the early game, turned the glove into a Thieves Gloves or Last Whisper later on. I forgot my exact temperament at the time, which is a shame. But maybe it was because I knew I needed to do better than 4th because we needed around 40 LP. So I didn't want to just get a 4th or a 3rd from a silly duelist game because then I'd have to play a lot. But we have a Ezreal pair so we could play underground for a little bit. I'm definitely doing some sort of cash out and ideally going into Samira. We have great Samira items. If we get one more bow, we have Last Whisper Runons, which I think are her two best paired up items. Uh, some people say like maybe you want Last Whisper Giant Slayer just because Giant Slayer is really good in the meta. But... For Giant Slayer, I normally build a third item, not really second, because I think Runons is just really, really good on Samira because she does AoE damage. In my item guide video earlier this set, I go over that all the attack damage, AoE damage dealers, they really like Runons, such as Zed and Samira, because you don't want them to get stuck on tanks and you want them to kill the other stuff that they're damaging. We get a glove here, not able to get a bow, so I guess we could either TG or use it as like a Quicksilver. Maybe we could still maybe play a Zed game. I think I make a mistake there. Maybe I should have grabbed the sword. The reason why is because, I'll be honest with you guys, I am not the most experienced Samira player. But I go ahead and commit to the comp here. I think I actually should have taken the sword, because I could have slammed Runons and Infinity Edge, and I know Last Whisper is super important. I consider it almost mandatory on her. But if you get a bunch of power spike from the IE runons, it might just take you into like a fast 9 or like a very safe level 8 so that you kind of just outlast everyone else and then you don't need to rely on the perfect items. But instead, 
Uh, I just greed the last whisper. I go for the glove. Maybe we'll turn it into an IE later on. But we do take a big loss here. But again, we're on underground, so we see our cash out right now. I'm not going to take it. It's just some gold, but... Since we got the underground so early and I plan on keeping them for a while and we have the KL2 to kind of item hold, I'm definitely not too concerned about like skipping that cash out. If I'm swapping into like a Kaisa build or something like that or maybe a, a Jax comp, remember we did underground for Jax one time yesterday, then yeah, of course you take the cash out. But if I'm going Samira, I'm definitely going to greed and maybe try to get maybe a three cash out, maybe even a four cash out, dare I say it. So we get a win here. We don't need to streak that well whenever you play underground because the econ's built into the trait. Of course, in a perfect world, you're always streaking, but it's not a be-all, end-all whenever you have underground active, though. We end up getting a rod here, and I'm about to cry at this point because I'm like, oh no, we're going for a last whisper comp, and then we get a rod drop? Not ideal. Oh my god, imagine if we saved our items to go duelist, and then we just get a locket drop? Oh, I would have been so happy there. Another bad thing that happens is, what does Rod build in a Samira comp? Not really anything, so you'd normally build a Morello Namicon, but we already have Sunfire board, so the effects don't stack. At this point, I'm scared. So let's think about how Samira works. Samira is a sure shot, so they have built-in scaling attack damage as the fight goes on. So whenever you play her, you just really want to focus on a strong front line. That means I made a mistake here. I should have slammed this locket in the Samira comp anyways, just because I'm never using this rod for anything else, the chain's not that important, even though something like a Bramble Vest would be slightly better. But just to use the rod component, I definitely should slam this locket to both save HP and just to use the rod. Whenever you have a useless item, it's best just to use it as fast as possible if it doesn't make anything better. Alright, it was a Zed game, right? We just have the Zed here. Very unfortunate because we still have to do the cash out. You don't want to play duelist with like 50 HP, which is how much we'll be at if we continue to play underground. So this guy hits a Samira. Other people are hitting Samira. So I re-roll to try to get it because we could get it off underground. Um, unlucky that there was only one four cost augment and we get Sejuani, which isn't horrible. You could still play her in the build, but obviously we wanted that Samira because holy cow, we are struggling right now. And if we played Samira, we could have done five underground, get a really quick cash out. I end up slamming the locket now, but man, this game is not going as planned. We get the rod drop, we get four cost augment on three, two, but we don't hit. And then there's one sure shot player here who took a Senna augment, and then there's a different person who took the Samira augment. Keep in mind, in my past like 20 games, I've probably seen like maybe two people go for Samira. I am shocked that the one time I try to go for her, two people are contesting me. It is not an ideal world to be in, but you know, it's the world we live in sometimes. So we take a fat loss here. Maybe this cash out saves us. Whenever you're in these situations, you need to start thinking about how do I turn this into not an eighth? Because remember what I said in the last video, Probably one of the reasons why I was climbing so well was because I turned my 8th places into 7th or maybe 6th or sometimes even 5th. So we're facing a Jax too. This guy's really strong. He also got a Jax augment, so we lose this one for sure. But we have to play with that attitude in mind. So we might have to use some goofy things just to not go 8th. Because if we go 8th, we could lose morale and just give up on the quest all together and just not try to qualify for the cup. And maybe just get a good night's rest, de-stress a little bit, maybe make some YouTube videos instead. Maybe work a little more on some of my other side projects, such as my OnlyFans. But ideally, we're qualifying for this, right? <sighs> it's rough. So what items did we have? We have a glove, belt, and negatron. We could finish a tank item here. So tank items are more important than the damage items in a Samira build, especially once you have the Last Whisper. After you have the Last Whisper, all the other items she has... It, it matters. I'm not saying it doesn't matter, but the tank items are more important. Again, this is because of sure shot. And here we're going to cut and run. This isn't the best cash out. We did get a tank item, so it's pretty decent. But like this orb, we just get six gold. It's, it's whatever. It, cash out two isn't the best one. Honestly, I'd rather just have taken the cash out one had I known that this would happen. So we're going to just do some Belvussy carry. We're going to slam the Last Whisper on her. I'm going to also slam the Guard Breaker on her because, again, we just need to play items. I got the belt initially for Warmogs, but since I want to use this Belveth and we have a Belveth pair, when we roll down on 4-1, we could just use her as an item holder until we get our Samira. So 
that's an angle that a lot of other players may or may not have taken because sometimes people just open up a guide, such as bunnymuffins.lol slash meta, and then they look at the champions and then they only buy the champions in the comp list. And if you're not pushing for the highest ranks, that's perfectly fine to do. Nothing wrong with that. But again, if you're trying to compete and qualify for a tournament that so many other people are trying to qualify for, you need to do a little stuff that's a little different. Other players may have been greedy and would have just saved up the gold and sold the Belveths to make 50 gold last turn, just in order to kind of have more gold to hit Samira. That's another viable line as well, but I think it's a little greedy. What I plan on doing instead is use this Belveth after rolling down a bit on level 7. Ideally, we won't have to roll that much since we have a lot of stuff paired up, and then once we hit level 8, that's where we'll try to find our Samira. But you guys can see here, Belveth, she really needs a healing item or augment, so she's a lot different from all the other attack damage carries. If you think of the other attack damage carries, it's really just Zed and Samira. Samira's in the back line. She could have like a hand of justice or something like that, but it's not mandatory at all. Zed, he has built-in healing from Hacker. So Belveth is the exception here where she needs that one healing item or augment. As you saw in the last fight, she took a lot of damage and that's just not where you want to be. We'll talk about the items in a bit. Let's roll down now just to hit this Belveth. We do. And we're also just going to complete this random jacks. So we're playing a few brawlers right now, so it's not horrible. And yeah, we have a lot of brawlers, no jacks. It's okay, we're griefing the other jacks players. But yeah, no healing item. We're going to slam the runons because these items are beautiful on Samira. And then we don't want the Sunfire Cape because we already have Sunfire Board, so we build the Gargoyle Stone Plate. Gargoyle, not that great in this comp because you run a lot of tanks. Gargoyle is a lot more valuable in solo tank comps or duo tank comps. Uh, but you just need to build the item because, again, we're not getting first place this game. That's already abundantly clear. Like, this guy has Samira. The other sure shot player is going to be taking Samira. But we're going to use this Belveth just to try to get, ideally, maybe a third, sometimes a second if we're able to fast nine. And, oh boy, it is a prismatic game. So the only two options I see here, since we don't have a reroll, is Verdant Veil and Windfall. So Verdant Veil is really good in the immediate sense because... It's good on Belveth. She's a short range attack damage carry and she just needs to keep auto attacking. So Verdant Veil works perfectly for that. If you want to go level 8 and get Samira really early, you take Windfall. But I feel like the Verdant Veil just has like a tiny bit more value because I just want to live for the now. We're just trying to not go 8th. At best situation, we get like a third. So we got to play with that in mind. And Verdant Veil gives us immediate power. We get some value here. We would have gotten stunned by that Sejuani. And then, yeah, hopefully this saves us a little bit of HP during stage four, because if we take Windfall, we're going to be leveling up maybe on 4-2 or 4-5 and rolling around like 50 gold to try to find Samir, which everyone has already. It's not looking that great, so you got to change your plan mid-flight sometimes. I feel like this is actually one of the perfect examples of that. Uh, in our shops, you may notice we're just picking up tanks. We want to play Echo, Alistair, the stuff you saw in the picture before. We could probably keep this Sejuani with a Vi because that gives us Brawler and Aegis. Uh, but yeah, we need to drop down from six Brawlers. Even though six Brawlers is really tanky, uh, the other boards are a little, little better because you don't have to run low-cost units such as Renekton or Blitzcrank because they're just really not that great in the mid or late game. Uh, you only run them when you play Jax because Jax is also a Brawler, so you buff him up at the same time but look at this Belva not doing that shabby isn't she but you can already tell having a healing item on her or healing augment does absolute wonders because if we had celestial blessing three on that augment round i think we could have gotten like a third for sure if not, maybe even a second on this carousel you just want to grab tank items with belt the only other item since we can't build sunfire cape is like a warmog so that's exactly what we got so a perfect item there uh, let's drop in zach or ramus to figure out who you want to put in, you have to scout. So if you are facing a Jax or Yumi player, you want to put Zack in. If you're facing an attack damage player, you want Ramus. We ended up dro dropping in Aesol. I don't know if that's better or worse. Because again, Aesol, we don't need his burn effect. But having another backliner is kind of nice because we have no one in our backline. You kind of don't want too many melee units. So I guess maybe the question between Zack versus Ramus, the answer may or may not have been Aesol. Uh, onto this next shop. Let's check the weather. It is mana. Not that great for us. Uh, we'll pick up Syndra, just drop random units in, I guess. If we don't have synergies from our threat units, we might as well have a Syndra throw in the threat units anyways. 
<laughs> Maybe it adds a little bit of power. We don't care that much about interest. Of course, we want to have interest as much as we can. But again, this game, this is our power spike. You know, we have zero Samiras. We need to hit Samira 2 before we change this Belveth. You don't want to hit a Samira 1 and then swap all the items over because Samira 1 is not going to help you at all at this stage. Our next shop here, we hit an Aphelios. Again, useless until we get our Samira. Maybe, just maybe, send a 2-star with Aphelios 1 might be better than Belveth. I'm actually not entirely too sure. Without any healing items, it might be, but if we had any sort of healing, it'd for sure be the Belveth. But without it, it's a really close call. I'm not sure if I should have kept that Senna or not, because uh, I could have sold other stuff to make interest. This last item doesn't matter, so I guess we could play Urgot, get a component. I'm checking around to see how much magic damage there is, because then we'll take the Negatron Cloak. But there's a Leona. We might just end up trying to play like random legendaries. Uh, this two-star Ramus is for sure better than other things because these brawler units like Lee Sin, Renekton, they're kind of useless. I should have kept on to the Vi. I don't know why I sold her. But until we two-star more things, we want to keep our two stars on the board such as Jax 2, Renekton 2. Uh, just because you, you just need upgraded units in TFT. Uh, but look at our Belveth. Like she's taking so much damage. It's really hurting that we don't have even like a hand of justice that doesn't give that much healing but it would have been just enough uh, for this game so we face a samira too luckily are we able to beat her is Jax gonna do Jax things holy cow dude Jax is so strong right no items he's still cranking it second in the dps charts all good we're not seventh or eighth so i am celebrating right now let's pick up the sejuani and then we probably should roll here yeah i do end up rolling we have a lot of upgrades that we want. We want to replace all these brawlers. Unfortunately, we upgrade another brawler, but it is what it is. We get the important Sejuani. We don't need Mordekaiser because he is an ace and Samira is an ace. And I don't want to point out the obvious, but we're playing Samira, but we got zero Samiras. So this is what you can do instead. Just have an item holder that melts right away because she doesn't have lifesteal. That LeBlanc just smurfed on her. And we're going to take a pretty solid loss here. Actually, we managed to kill a couple of his units because his tanks were pretty weak, but it's still not like a great loss. It's actually, no, one, two, three, four, five, six, six unit loss. Okay, that's a pretty terrible loss, actually. So we're at 26 health, but we got our fifth place locked in right here. Let's see this next roll down. We finally get a Samira, but again, you really want this. One star Samira is not going to change anything. She's going to tickle people. <laughs> So we do our roll down and in the interest of time, I'm just going to end this game right here. There's nothing much else to look at. We're going to get fifth. Everyone else hit their two star carries. We're sitting here with uh, no healing Belveth. We're sitting here with the Samira one. There, there's not much you could do in this game. So we'll just take the fifth and kind of move on with our life. We'll watch this last fight. This is a duelist board. You know how everyone outscales duelist by stage five? That means we should beat them, right? But our board is just so weak that it doesn't really matter. We, <laughs> we kind of get demolished here, but uh, not demolished, but like it's a duelist player, right? You have to be duelist in stage five. If not, your comp is trash, right? Because uh, this is when they typically fall off. And if we're losing to this guy, there's no way we're beating anyone else in this game. So we drop down to 476 LP. Let's queue it back up. We get six challengers in our next game, so that's pretty good. We grabbed a tier off a of carousel, and then we get belt bow drop. That's pretty good. Uh, whenever you have a lot of challengers in your game, that's actually a good thing, because that means you get better MMR gains, because you're facing better players. And that makes complete sense. If I was in a full GM game, I might do better because the players are worse, but I'd gain less. So there's only one option here. It's Raider Spoils. It's just probably one of the best... 2-1 augments ever, uh, at least right now. So we get a GP2, that's very nice. We're getting Ezreal. So I did spoil what comp I played this game beforehand, but I'll leave it as a secret for now, just in case you guys forgot. And we'll see how we kind of pivot into this. We have an upgraded unit, so I think we should level up here, play a, another brawler. So we'll go ahead and do that, drop in the Lee Sin. Oh, I remember this game, I made a mistake. I meant to play Lee Sin, but I just misclicked. So since it's a 2-1-1 hero augment round, we're going to be going for a Kaisa game. So congrats to the people who guessed that correctly. We slammed the Static Shiv here. And yeah, we're just going to try to go for the Kaisa build because this Ezreal augment is insane for that. You can also use this Ezreal augment just to tempo into other stuff and also use it just to play literally anything because 
you don't have to play him in the late game. You could just kind of keep him until the mid game, maybe around stage five. You could replace him if he gives you no synergies, but obviously in a recon build, you could play him the entire game, which makes this really, really nice. We ended up getting Blitzcrank hooked, which is awesome, right? Because we get a nice free win here. Whenever there's a gold augment or a two cost hero augment, you always have to be careful of those Blitzcrank hooks. Uh, so this is an interesting decision point. Do we want to upgrade this poppy put it in like who would it go over i think renekton's a better unit but maybe we could do wukong plus poppy maybe take out the vein but vein gives us duelist for gangplank you always want to play around the synergies of stuff you have upgraded i end up just like not caring about the poppy you guys know how much i respect renekton in the early game and oh man another guy has the same augment so we need to watch out for that maybe he can test our kaisa uh, but yeah this person we just blow right through he's got no upgrades so pretty easy win there we're on a three streak so we would definitely want to continue that. You could argue, you know how sometimes people level up to level 5 on 2-3? You could have definitely done that here, but I do prefer having Econ whenever I go for Kai'Sa. It's Rod here, by the way. Uh, you could get the glove if you want to slam Guard Breaker. If you want a win streak, definitely the play there. But Rod plus a Ramus is pretty good. We could turn that into maybe... Uh, I guess you don't want the Rod on Ramus because we already have a Shiv. I'm checking now to remind myself of what items it could build. You could go Rage Blade, Jeweled Gauntlet, Hextech Gunblade. If you do Jeweled Gauntlet, you don't need four Recon. Since we're on a win streak, maybe we should have jammed this Morello. Maybe we should have just gotten the Guard Breaker instead and just slammed it. It's really tough because you don't expect to win streak in stage two that often when you're going for Recons because you're really just trying to have as much gold as you can for stage three, two. And normally to do that, you lose streak. But this game, we had a bunch of upgrades, so I decided to win streak instead. Again, you always need to know how to break the rules or when to break the rules. Just because a guide says to do something doesn't mean you always have to do it. This Kai'Sa definitely should go in later on. So we're in a very good spot right now. We got some of the natural units. We have Static Shiv, which I think is the most important item on her. We have complementary items. We have a belt for tanking, a rod, potentially for a Rage Blade, Hextite Gunblade, Jeweled Gauntlet. Even if it's not like the best in slot item, it's still pretty solid. Maybe there's one person contesting us. We don't actually know for sure because, again, some people take Raider Spoils to kind of tempo or gain Econ. It's just a very solid augment in general. But obviously, the best build is just to force Kaisa. So we end up dropping the Ramus, or at least putting the one with Rod on our bench. Uh, put the naked Ramus into the, into the fight just in case we want to sell this guy. I don't really know if we want to complete this or not. It's obviously a really big upgrade, but since Bo dropped off a, uh, the neutral rounds, I definitely want to sell this because I'm going to make the Rage Blade now. If there was no buildable rod item, I would have just made the Ramus 2 and build Borello on him. But since the rod dropped, we're going to just sell the Ramus, build the Rage Blade on Kaisa, and we are in a tip-top shape. One debatable move is whether you want to build the Sunfire Cape or not. So the best three items on Ramus is just pure tank. You want Gargoyle Stoneplate because we're running a two tank comp. We normally use Ramus and Cho'Gath. So that's ideally the best build. Pair that up with a Warmogs, maybe a Bramble Vest, and then you're chilling. Does that mean Sunfire is bad? By no means no, but there are better items and you could decide whether you want to be greedy, save up for the perfect items, or just slam right away to get more value. Uh, so this shop here, it's a little tough. We don't have much healing for first aid kit. Luden's Echo, eh, kind of iffy. We don't have that many units and we don't cast that much. So it's just a second wind here. You could debate re-rolling. Even though it's a silver augment, it's not that bad. Because like second wind, while okay, it isn't like game breaking by any means. Eh, actually, just take the second wind. All right, let's roll down. Let's hit this Kaisa 2 as we always do, right? Right? We get Ramus 2. That's a huge upgrade. No Kaisa 2. But we're in decent shape. I, did, I rolled kind of slowly. I had maybe 15 gold left. Oh my goodness. This guy's just using Kaisa 2 as an item holder. At least he doesn't have Jax 2. Would you guys rather us have Kaisa 2, this guy have Jax 2 and no Kaisas, or have the situation where we're Kaisa 1 and he's using Kaisa 2 as an item holder? I'm actually not sure. Probably I'd rather just have Kaisa 2 myself and just let this guy have Jax. You know, we always have to think of ourselves in TFT. I swear, whenever I play Kai'Sa, I get so many copies of Ezreal, but I never even make him 3-star. I scout the other Raider Spoil player, and it looks like he's going something else, because he built a Runons and Giant Slayer, so he's probably not going for Kai'Sa. Very good news for us. That means we are going to be uncontested Kai'Sa. It's the first uncontested Kai'Sa game I've had in a while, probably. 
We get the Blitzcrank hook again, and it surprises a lot of people. Obviously, we didn't get his Kale, two-item Kale, but it, it always gets something good. I'm not saying it's the best item to get in a vacuum, but from getting it from Raider Spoil, no one plays around it. So I really, what the difference is in terms of like LP gain, if you don't have that option from Raider Spoil. But we get this double Ramus shop, very happy about that. One tricky item to play around is this Randuin's Omen, because... You don't really group up in this comp, and you also don't know if you're going to get it, so you don't want to group up for no reason. I guess Raider Spoil giveth and taketh. Sometimes you get the Blitz Hook, sometimes you get Randuins, but I'm going to always try to give an item to my upgraded units. In this case, it was going to be the Ramus. I know a lot of players, they just defaulted on their main carry, which in this case is Kaisa, and we see another one of her in our shop, which is very, very welcome, right? But... You always want to put items on your upgraded units, and in this case right now, we don't have Kaisa upgraded. That's why we put Ezreal up front with our Ramus. Also, we have two Ramus 2s. We'd rather just run that over the Cho'Gath. I guess you could scout around if you have Cho'Gath 2 versus Ramus 2. Scout to see how much AP or AD is in your matchups, and then play whichever one you have more of. We get a bunch of gold here and a Cho'Gath copy, and then more gold. We sell those. But yeah, if two people are playing like Yumi... And one other person's playing, I don't know, let's say Duelist, then you put in the Cho'Gath. But if there's like more Duelist players, then you put in the Ramus that round. We're going to roll down. Velkos 2, I never know what, whether to make or not, because he's great as like a random unit, but I'd actually prefer the second Ramus. We're one off Ramus 3, so it's a little tricky. Had we gotten Ramus 3 right now, and that's what we're rolling for, that's why we're rolling so low, then you'd want the Velkos 2 to drop him in in case uh, you get the ram is three because that means we'll have one less unit on our board but we don't end up hitting it so it's a little <laughs> it's a good thing we didn't buy it so the only reason why we rolled down to zero is one we normally do it and two we we're so close to ram is three that it's just worth rolling the payoff from it is so great i know we're at 90 health so we probably could have been a bit more patient so i guess there wouldn't be that much of like an lp difference if you only rolled down to 20 30 or just rolled down to 10 like i did so for these augments, you guys know how much I hate Recon Crest, right? In this situation, it's probably not that bad because we have a bunch of Velkazes we could put in, so we could just drop Ash. But one thing I've learned is that Component Grab Bag is so good for this team composition. Can you guys guess why? Pause the video if you want to think about it first. But the reason why Component Grab Bag is so good is because you need to itemize a lot of units, especially your tanks. So we get a little unlucky here. We get Double Bow glove and belt so we get a ton of damage items but we already have two damage items on our kaisa and then the damage items that are buildable is rfc last whisper and runons all of which are like i guess rfc is okay on kaisa but i already have the rage blade so you don't want to stack too much attack speed because then she gets to max attack speed too quickly and in which case it's a waste if i had something like static shiv giant slayer and then i could build an rfc as a last item i would definitely do that but I would consider this a little unlucky. You guys know how much I hate Vayne, so I just don't even bother itemizing her unless I get her to three star, which I guess in this game, it's looking like it. Again, rolling down to zero because I'm one off Ram is three. It's just such a huge spike. It'll save us so much HP because it'll guarantee win all these stage four rounds. That's why I'm rolling so aggressively. Just because you do something and it doesn't work out doesn't mean it's a bad play. I think rolling for this Ram is, especially when at this point, I just thought I needed maybe like a third. <laughs> I hook his carry and then he FFs. Hilarious. But the pressure to qualify for the tournament definitely did affect my play a little bit. On this carousel, what items would you guys get here? My top pick would be this uh, chain vest because we have a lot of bows. I don't want to put them on my vein, so we just make a titan's resolve. Because again, I just want tank items and I just play three extra recon units just to buff up my kaisa. I don't play them to itemize them, but we're going to roll down pretty much to 10 every single turn. It is now time for the Bunny Muffins tip of the day. If you want to roll for something and you want to roll down to like a low gold amount, if you're high health like we are, we're 76 right now, never roll to zero. Always roll down to 10. The reason why is because at 10, you could reasonably build up your econ in the next couple of rounds. But if you're at zero, it's impossible to make like the next interest threshold in like a turn or two. So that's why you always roll down to 10, never down to zero if you're high health. Obviously, if you're low health, you do you. But for now, we'll just roll down to 10 every turn. We get the Ramus 3. Let's just drop in, <laughs> I guess, the Cho'Gath 1. Just imagine the power we would have had if we 
had the Ramus three star at stage four one, and then we kept the Belkos too. Oh my god, these we'd be at ninety health still, and then these guys would have been smacked for so much every single turn. So, what do you guys think about this Kaisa Camille matchup? I always thought it was bad for the recons, but I have this friend. He's a Camille lover, and he says recons are a bad matchup. Maybe it's just like a 50-50 fight because if she's on the right side as you, I feel like the Camille just one taps her Kaisa and she doesn't dash away. Uh, but maybe sometimes she does dash away and then you're safe. I don't really know how to think about that. We get a rod and glove. Again, we really needed tank items here. This is so unfortunate because we have this Cho'Gath with just naked items. So maybe we just Thieves gloves him. This last pick is really hard. Like, do we Giant Slayer? We don't have room on our Kaisa anymore. Do we want to itemize Vayne because she's almost three star? Maybe. So we could maybe Runons. Ah, uh, no. We could Rage Blade. I, uh, see, you want Giant Slayer, right? But all the items that are good on Vayne build from the bow. So you can't just waste the bow on the Giant Slayer. So we'll just end up making a Rage Blade. It could have been Last Whisper. You really just care about Kaisa, right? That one's really tough. I'd ended up building the Dragon Claw on the Chogat. Honestly, not 100% sure if that's correct or not. We face an ability power guy here, but we lose anyways despite having a D Claw Chogath. Maybe it's just itemizing Vayne. Maybe I could have done like a QSS Runon's Vayne. At this point, I'm low gold. I roll here, but I really think this is a mistake. I'm rolling to replace the Zac one that we have. But we were pretty healthy, so even though we end up hitting here, I don't think it was actually correct. The reason why is because we kept doing the roll down to 10 on 5-1 and then now this stage as well. But we were decently healthy at the time, so I think we could have actually greeted out and we got hooked here. We Luckily, recons dash away. Um, but I think we could have actually greeted out to increase our chances to hit Kaisa 3. I don't think we desperately needed to replace our 1-star Zac or find a 2-star Zac because... I don't know. We're healthy, so we lost the last round anyways. If we were at 44 life, we lose this one. We're at like 30. If we were at like 35 life, if we like killed more units, would that really change our game plan that much, you know? Or I guess we're at 34. Let's say we were at 30 life because we didn't have the upgraded Zac 2. I think we'd actually play the same, and then we'd roll down around now, and then we'd have like a couple more, couple more gold to play with, right? Because 34 and 30 HP, it's kind of like the same, right? We could have even taken one more loss. We wouldn't even roll down here. We'd roll down after Carousel. We might have had 30, maybe even 40 gold, depending on what unit we get if we saved up. And then that seems like pretty high chances to just hit Kaisa 3 on stage 5-5. Five, five. So I think I make a mistake rolling to 10 on both 5-1 and 5-2. I feel like I get pressured a lot whenever I play reroll because obviously, by the way, it's IE here because there are no tank items. If there was a tank item, we'd take it. But the power difference between Kaisa 2 and Kaisa 3 is so big, but in order to get it, you have to roll a ton of gold, right? We get lucky here, I'm not going to lie. Unlucky on the items, lucky on the hit there because we misplayed earlier. But I'd say, again, if we just had more gold, we'd pretty much guarantee hit or have like a very high chance to hit this Kaisa. Um, so I'm, this guy's running LeBlanc carry still in stage 5-5. Five, five. Oh, I feel bad for him. He's probably getting knocked out soon, or he just has like a lot of health or something like that. Wait, we lose to, oh my god, we lost to LeBlanc 2 in stage 5-5 five five with Kaisa 3. How is that even remotely possible? Like, I get it, we don't have items on our tanks, but like, is it really that strong? There's no way, right? We're rolling to zero here? I have no idea why. Like, again, I just like roll down all my gold really impatiently. Th this is very bad patience from me. Because uh, again, what, what upgrade were we trying to hit? Were we trying to hit two veins and two Cho'Gaths in like one shot? Very unlikely to happen. If we were one off Cho'Gath or one off vein, then I'd understand it. If we were one off both of them, for sure we'd do it. But yeah, look, this um, Camille player just killed us here. I, I really don't get that matchup, how it could be good for us. We end up getting a Nico, which is really good. And let's see what item we get. I'm actually going to roll down first before I go for the item. And we hit the vein. We have the duplicator for Cho'Gath. And we get a tank item. And it's the best one for Ramis. Holy cow, we are saved. We are hard chilling now. Maybe this vein does something. Maybe she doesn't. I don't really know. I was in a Discord call and someone was itemizing their vein over Kaisa in a recon build. And I was like, what are you doing, bro? 
and they're like oh it's not bad like and I, I saw it it didn't do that badly but i swear to you guys whenever i itemize this vein she does absolutely nothing obviously th she's three star right now she's got an orn item on her so she's gonna do well in this fight but like i feel like kaisa is just so much more reliable we end up knocking this guy out here and it's looking like at least a top three we're facing the leblanc guy wow this guy still has leblanc <sighs> We did get a bunch of upgrades though, so I, I think we're good against her now. If not, then something's wrong with the game. I guess the Vayne is smurfing a little bit here. She's kind of targeting the Kai'Sa. Very, <laughs> very nicely done. And then our Rammus just isn't dying, but Vayne and Kai'Sa duo double Rage Blade. Not bad, not bad. Uh, this person has a duplicator on his bench, so I feel a little bad for him, but we get a nice slow win there. He's not knocked out yet? Oh no. This next shop here, I guess we just... We should level up, right? Maybe next turn. We end up facing the Camille player, and it says Ghost, so Hacker isn't working on Ghost boards for some reason, and then we target the Camille right away. There's the, this guy's doing the double BT bug right now. A little cringe. I won't deny that. It's a little cringe. Apparently, it's not super OP, but obviously, it's pretty strong, and we end up we end up just dying to it there, but... Do we get a second? This guy's also beating the other guy, so it's going to be extremely close. We do end up sniping that second. And then at this point, we are at 516 LP. Good enough for challenger, but not good enough to qualify. So we need to run it back again. See what I do for you guys? We're not going to just sit 516 LP, wait for the rank reset, and get challenger that next day. We're going to actually just keep playing because we need to qualify for this tournament. We get a tier and a lot of gold here. You could sell for interest here. I end up holding it because I didn't have enough time. And then out of these options, admin heart. I don't know what my admin is. So it's a pretty easy decision here. First aid kit, not really that useful either unless you know exactly where you're going. So I'm scouting for Galio players right now and Yumi players. And it seemed like a bunch of other people were going for it. We had the tier, so it is possible to first aid kit force Yumi. But in this situation, I thought I just needed like a fourth or a third in order to get to around 520, 525, 530 LP, because I thought that would be enough to qualify at this point in time. Again, it ended up being I needed 580 LP, but it is what it is. At the time, you don't, you can't predict these things. That's what makes qualifying for these so difficult, because you don't know how many people are actually going to play and try to rank up to get it. We have a Sivir pair here. Band of Thieves is really good for getting like top fours, obviously. Not too much in this shop here. We'll just drop in the Nyla. It's like a slight improvement to our board. And could this be a duelist game? We have a chain. We have a Thieves Gloves. Those are both very good for duelists. But we have this tier. I, tier is just so bad in duelists. There's not a single item I'm happy about building in it. Yeah, you could build Redemption. Yeah, you could build Protector's Vow. Yeah, you can build Handed Justice. But Protector's Vow, I'm using my chains for lockets. Hand of Justice, I don't care about my Zed and I don't need healing on my Vein. And then what was the first item I said? Redemption, it's like, I only build that because Belt's also useless in the comp. So it's just not very good. So we're probably not doing Duelist. I'm going to pick up Kai'Sa here. Maybe it's another Kai'Sa game. Like TG could go on Trogath or Rammus. Uh, we have the tier for Static Shiv. Maybe the chain is like a Bramble Vest, Stone Plate, stuff like that. It's very possible. We face off against a guy with three two-starred units. So I think we lose this one. He also has like Battle Mage on them. So pretty decent early on. Wait, do we actually... Holy cow, this Gangplank's actually just smurfing. I, I guess we have a lot of upgrades as well. We have Gangplank 2, Kale 2, but he had three of them. Holy cow. We end up winning. So we are hopefully going to win streak. So you definitely, when you're win streaking... You need to build items. But the awkward part right now is... Let's just grab the belt, by the way. I, I think we're just going to do an AP game. You could have also grabbed Spatula. That's the more greedy play. But in this situation, I just needed like uh, a top four or something like that. At least that's what I thought. Uh, this board's a little tricky. Hmm. <sighs> but yeah, I, I should have taken Spatula for sure. Like, I want to build Sunfire Cape, but I don't want to sell my Kale, so... <laughs> It's very awkward. We also didn't end up hitting four duelists in our shops, so I'm just going to play this extra Kaisa here. Not the biggest upgrade. We'll belt the Nyla, and I guess that's our board. We're facing, of course, we face a one, two, three, four duelist board when we wanted it just for the early game, so we're going to get smashed, of course. Duelist is just so good for win streaking. I think we have more upgrades than this guy, but it, it just doesn't end up mattering. Look at the power of this comp. 
it just steamrolls us. Even though we, yeah, we also don't have an item, so that hurts as well. We have the TG, that's it, but that's from our augment. So we're essentially like down a bunch of power. Let's check the admin. We get a LeBlanc here. Oh, and what I meant to say before, uh, this one probably, yeah, the middle one. It's just so good in the early game for win streaking, but we don't have a streak, but you still do it. Oh, I make a big mistake here. I build the redemption because I thought I wanted to win streak, but that was just completely wrong. It's not because we could have saw that we were weaker than the other guy. It's mainly because you just need tears in... AP comps and slamming the redemption while it's still a good item on those units such as Annie, Echo, things like that. The fact that you lose a tier is just so crucial because when we're playing AP flex, you're flexing into either Talia or Soraka. When you're playing Soraka, you want a blue buff. When you're playing Talia, you want either Shojin or blue buff. Doesn't really matter. Shojin's a little better, but overall they're approximately the same. Um, so if you build Redemption, you just completely block out Soraka. Like, Shojin Soraka versus Blue Buff Soraka, big difference. So it just ends up being really scuffed, and I didn't even win streak anyway, so just double whammy bad there. I mean, just take a look at our items right now. We could have had, right now, at this exact moment, we could have had Shojin, Sunfire, and then we have an extra belt to build like a Warmogs with later on, or a Guard Breaker. So, that would have just been perfect items for Talia, right? We have a Shojin Guardbreaker and we have the Sunfire Cape. Like, wow, that is exactly what I want. But instead, we have the Silly Redemption, which again is good, but not unless we have the perfect damage items. This Augment choice is pretty easy. Uh, actually, maybe not the easiest. We don't have tier items, so Ludens is a little sketchy. If we did have Shojin, I'd probably pick Ludens. Component Grab Bag... We only have one item, so not that worth it. So it's just a Stand United. Stand United is pretty good for AP comps because you play a lot of different traits. I end up taking the Ludens, but I, I think that's a mistake. Uh, so we buy this Kaisa, drop her in. We're going to do a small roll down. We get the Kaisa 2. Going to be a great item holder, but guess what? Because we misbuilt the items before, there are no items for this Kaisa to item hold with. Can you see how that one mistake costed us so much this game? It's just these little things that sometimes you don't realize it that just completely grief everything. But we'll stop talking about that. Let's just try to focus on what happens if you're already in this situation and what to do to try to work around it. By no means is the game over for us. We just could have been in an extremely, extremely good situation. This next matchup is a Locket Duelist. So are we able to beat? There's no way, right? We should because we have a Kaisa too, right? I guess he has Nyla too. So we're about even in terms of power level. But yeah, no no chance we beat a duelist in stage three. Uh, <laughs> so we're going to take maybe not that much damage. Our team's actually cleaning up a little bit. But imagine if we... Okay, I'll, 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 I won't say it. Yeah, you, you guys know what I was going to say. Because even with no items, this Kaisa is doing like a ton of work right now. And yeah. Onto the carousel. We wanted a tier, but that's not there. After that, second choice would be bow. Not there. So let's just grab the glove. Holy cow, last time I'll say this, but we could have had Shojin Guardbreaker right now. Uh, let's pick up the Annies, we need her eventually. I end up leveling up here, not sure if that's a mistake or not, because we're already so high health, I think we could have just leveled up at 4-1. Normally I level up when I can keep at least 30 gold. In this game here, we have 20 gold, so I'm breaking my rule, and sometimes you do have to break the rules, but I don't think this is one of those situations where I should have. I added in an Annie, which gives me Spell Slinger, and that's it. But both my spell slingers are one cost or one star. I have a one star Sona and a one star Annie. So it's really not doing that much. So that's just a really easy way for me to lose like around five gold there. Uh, let's put in this LeBlanc probably. We kind of want to clean up our board a little bit. We don't really need the Nyla. Nyla is a great early game unit, but maybe the Ramus can hold the items better. Or maybe I just drop it on Annie because she's my late game item holder anyways. I'll probably TG the Ramus actually. I didn't have time to scout, so we just completely whiff on the shroud here, but that's okay. That's what happens when you rush a turn. You don't have time to scout, and scouting is super important, especially since they show you the matchups. If you're not sweating it, everyone else is, especially if you're trying to, like, climb high ranks. If you're not, like, trying to climb high ranks, like, obviously you could still get to, like, challenger without scouting. I know a lot of players who are challenger who don't scout, but it definitely helps a lot if you just do, because it's not that hard, you know? Uh, we end up knocking this other Kaisa player out. He's probably so pissed at us because we're just running a random Kaisa too. But like, that's what we wanted to use as our item holder. We just don't have items yet. 
We get a glove and we get some gold. Last thing is a Negatron. I guess we're building second thieves gloves because there's literally nothing else we could build right now. The other options are building an IE and building a QSS. Let's do a soft scout. This guy has Talia already, two star Annie. So, ah man, I swear whenever I play AP like this, I always get super contested, which is a little unfortunate. This guy we're facing now has a Jax 2, RFC, double electro charge, extra bow. Hand of Justice isn't that great, but like you just slam it just to get value right away. We get absolutely smashed there. We're 63 life. I'm a little scared right now. So one thing I was really banking on was I was hoping for a hero augment here. And because that gives us a four cost hero augment most likely, and we could have just picked Talia and that would have saved our game completely. Instead, we have these silver garbage doo-doo augments and we just take a stand united. And that really hurts us because we don't have a single copy of Talia. This happens to me a lot sometimes. I'm playing a reroll comp and then I'm hoping for no hero augment like we have in this game so that no one else power spikes. By the way, this guy's got Talia 2, no Talia augment, by the way. Sona 2, LeBlanc 2, Alistair 2, Annie 2, like, holy cow. <laughs> but then whenever I'm hoping for a 4 cost augment, it never is. And I... <sighs> I just hate how that happens, and we just get completely smashed by this Talia player. So both the Talia players, one of them's got one star Talia, the other one has two star, and they both have decent items for them. I'm sitting here, no Talias and no items. All we can do at this point, also I'm like pretty low health, right? Uh, but all we can do at this point is just go to eight on four five, roll it down to zero, and literally just pray. That's literally it. By the way, the six gold that we lost from leveling up early really starting to hurt us now. On this carousel, we get a little save. We, there's a Talia with Rod there, so we'll just grab that. But we level up now. Let's pick up this Yumi. We have 27 gold to level up or to roll with. So imagine if we had 33. Uh, let's get the Fiddlestick, Sona. We get Sona too. There's this MF2 if we want it, but I don't really think it even improves anything over our board. Uh, we're going to drop this Echo in. There's a second Fiddlesticks. This is probably bait because it's really hard to collect Fiddle 2 at this point, but you know, sometimes it happens. Uh, what else do we take? Oh yeah, we need to drop Kaisa. There's the Annie too. That's pretty big. And then um, TG Echo, probably TG Fiddlesticks on this other one. Okay, good job. <laughs> I almost put it on Alistair. It could be argued you could TG your Sona because she's like your only upgraded unit. And since some of your tanks are itemized already, maybe you want to itemize one of your damage units. Even though TG on Sona is pretty god awful, it's better than nothing, you know? Um, so that's one potential thing there. Also, this guy's blue buff, Soraka, Giant Slayer with Ludens. Like, holy cow. I, I, I'm definitely behind all the other AP players right now. I realize that I beat him there, but again, blue buff with Ludens is just such a good combo, especially on a fast caster like Soraka. Let's scout around a bit. Two Star Zed, Locket, Knife's Edge, Duelist Heart, holy cow, Samira 2, perfect item. Uh, it's like... This is the point where you start feeling a little scared because you're like, do I just go 8th here and then give up on the climb? Uh, we're facing a Kai'Sa 2, which is definitely a lot more manageable than all the other players that we just scouted. But even though he's weaker than them, that doesn't mean that we are stronger. But we get bailed out by these Fiddlesticks Thieves Gloves items. Like, holy cow, Archangel's Jeweled Gauntlet, are you kidding me? This fiddle just completely saved my game and my life. That's how life happens sometimes though. Sometimes you get unlucky roll downs, but you get lucky fiddlesticks items. Now we just pray that we hit decent items to build on Talia. We get a rod so we could uh, maybe Hexag Gunblade her or just hat her. Yeah, probably hat. And then let's see what we get here. Yay, no Talia items. Very fun. Thank you, Mortdog. Okay, so Ionic Spark is pretty necessary. So we might be building that. After that, ugh. Maybe we just go Dragon Claw or Bramble Vest or something. Ah, maybe it's a D Claw. So I end up building Rabadon's Death Cap and Edge of Night and the D Claw. I don't really know what you want here though. Is it Gunblade? Is it Ionic Spark? Like, I need two items on my Talia. I don't care if Edge of Night is garbage, it's better than nothing, you know, because I, I just don't need any more tank items right now. So I end up building the Edge of Night. It's actually not bad. Let's think about it for a moment. Against Yumi players, it forces them to waste more spells on her because she gets the invulnerability. And then against um, like a, other Talia players, it does the same exact thing. So imagine if that cast finished, we'd only take a two-unit loss. 
but we need to roll down again. We see nothing here, nothing here. We get an echo. We're hard stuck on like four pairs right now. This is uh, tragic. All this pain we're in right now is all due to leveling up too early on stage 3-5. If we had that six extra gold before, like we collect more interest perhaps, or we roll down three more times here, like it definitely matters a lot. And this guy is three item Talia, very good, Shojin JG, Hand of Justice, all very solid. And surprisingly, we don't take a bad loss. Even though our fiddle six rolled Zeke's Herald, Deathblade, we end up killing like an okay amount of units. We killed three units, I think. It could be worse. It could be worse. We're at 19 life. Now we're at three. Oh my God. Somehow we're not eighth. We're six, but we smacked that Talia so fast, but we are not out of the gates yet because everyone else, like, look at this guy. Like, okay, he's not that strong, but he's got like two star Soraka. He ripped blue buff JG on his thieves gloves. Granted, my fiddle has Morello Ionic, so that's really good too, but like, holy cow, we both just completely high rolled our TG items completely. We somehow managed to beat a brawler board without Giant Slayer. I, I really don't know how. I'm flabbergasted, to be honest with you guys. Anyone know what happened that fight? Like, you look at the damage and it's like, there's no Giant Slayer. How do we even beat that? On this carousel, blue buff is the only item we are looking for. If not, Archangels, if we couldn't get that. It's a real shame because there's a Spell Slinger spat there, but we just can't take it. Looking back into this game, is the play take the Spell Slinger spat so that the other Spell Slinger players can't take it? I'm not really too sure. I think since we're only 3 HP, we just really- Oh my god, this guy cringe Zephyrs us. I swear to god, this Darth Nub guy, he is a pro swapper. It's really cringe, don't get me wrong, but Every time he does a last second swap and he always gets me. I hate him for it, but you know what? Respect where it's due. But look at this guy. Like he's got a bunch of upgrades. I feel like we're just not that strong and our items are just so bad. Our front line's mainly one stars, but we somehow sneak out a win here. For crying out loud, we have like one star echo still. Like it's stage five, six at this point. Like, please. We finally end up facing the Samira, Sedge 2, Zach 2, Ramus 2 guy. Um, he does have the Aphelios one, so that's like equivalent to our fiddle one, but he's got great Samira items. Like, look at that. Holy cow. We get stunned by the Sejuani as well. I'm not sure why we're not cornered. Was there maybe someone with Blitzhook or something like that? I, I don't think there was, but we end up knocking him out here. I don't know how we're winning these. I'm going to be honest, but somehow we snuck a top four just like that. Is this Vayne guy Soraka or Vayne? The TG <laughs> tank item Soraka. Let's see what we get from this, Zach. Do you guys like that they remove dragons and change them into like the Zach? I feel like it's cool for the monsters attack stuff. Oh, there's we would have had good Talia items if we didn't slam Edge of Night, but Edge of Night definitely did help us in the game. I think it's just a blue Buffy on Sona. It could be Ionic Spark as well on Alistair, but Alistair's so booty. Let's look for this Echo 2 here, but we rip a fiddle. Holy cow is the game save. Oh my god, we upgrade our board at stage 6-1. We get Zephyr again. Oh my god, dude, these Zephyr players are actually so cringe, but it is what it is. At least we have decent fiddle 6 items. It makes my tank line really tanky, so it kind of canceled out the effect of the, of the Zephyr. And then we have this great angle for our Talia. No Giant Slayer against this Jax, which is obviously really rough, right? But oh, what is even going on right now? We we actually won this fight, did we? Dude, look at this Edge of Night doing work, holy cow. Obviously, if we have Giant Slayer, we win anyways, but the Edge of Night actually did something there. That's like the first time it did. So we just get a third right there out of a hat, honestly. Tell me in a game where we are the last players to hit Talia that we outplace all the other Talia players with these items without our frontline upgraded for most of the game. I don't even know how that happened. This game is honestly a Christmas miracle, and that's all I can really say about it. Uh, this guy's fiddle is just disgusting, right? He's got three AP items on him. Oh, sweet Jesus. We end up winning this one? Wait, what place did we end up getting this game? There's no way we get a second here, right? I honestly forgot. Okay, not a second. We have 19 gold, but there's nothing to roll for, so let's just go to the fight. We face the Nyla 3 guy. This is the duelist player, but he's got, like, is that a... Uh, 
He's had a Mordekaiser too. Oh, jeez. We end up losing to him. Do, uh, wait, do we? Fiddle 2 as well. We both have Fiddle 2. Oh, he, he was a guy with Fiddle 1 before. And then we barely just don't squeeze that out. And then our Ghost loses to the Brawler player. So overall third, we'll take it. So now let's go back into the tournament lore because we're at 540 LP. And at that time, this was good enough for, I think this was 160th place. I honestly don't remember the exact number, but apparently rumor has it is that you need around like top 200 to actually qualify even though they, it's technically top 160. The reason why is because a lot of foreign players play on the NA server and they can't take up those tournament slots because they play in their own region. So that's why you just need approximately top 200. So I go to bed and then I wake up and then all of a sudden I wake up and I'm 225th place. Today, I also had a family dinner for Chinese New Year with my extended family. So I, I really had to buckle down and climb after everyone left because the snapshot takes the snapshot at 3 a.m. my time midnight in West Coast time. I knew this in advance. So I actually like didn't drink anything during the party or anything. I, I knew right afterwards I was running down to my computer to go climb. So just picture me, I'm a little, a little rushed, you know, and I'm like a little antsy. I was 540 LP, I needed to get, I thought at the time around 560 and then 580 to be safe. It ended up being 580, but this is the first game we're gonna play here. We get the Thieves Gloves, very similar to last game. We're probably gonna play AP and this is a beautiful start. Look at how beautiful this start is. We get a TG, great for the random tanks that we have. We have Ionic Spark right away. Lots of different options you could do here. So really just one win and we're good, right? One win is around plus 40 LP, so we'll be at like 580. That'd be pretty safe to just chill on. Because um, at the time, I thought 580 would be safe. I thought 560 would probably make it, but would be a little risky, but it ended up being around like 580. So against this guy, I should win. We have like so many two stars. We natural this Lulu two, we slammed the Ionic, we have a Wukong two with TG. All in all, not bad. And by the way, when you're playing for win streak, you want to hold on to as many units as possible. So always try to buy everything in your shop whenever you are trying to go for a win streak. After that scouting we did, there seems to be like one Jax player, maybe two, and then two other AP players, and then maybe one or two Yumi players. It's really hard to tell because obviously people are going to be pivoting, but we're against this Nyla who just heals up for infinite. Are we able to win this fight? I'm hoping the Wukong, yeah, we, we win this fight pretty easily. Very good there. So again, win streak going nice and fantastic here. We just need to complete this jeweled gauntlet on the carousel and then we are golden. So we hit him there, pick up the Silas. Silas is so trash right now, but maybe next patch he's good. Let's grab the Kaisa. And what, what would you play here for strongest board? I honestly don't know. When you're playing Nyla, you wanna play a bunch of melee so that she heals more people. So that's why I prefer Gangplank over Kale. Do I wanna play like a random Kaisa though? I'm not really sure. There's also the chance to do an early level up, level up to five here. Definitely could have been possible. In fact, we face a guy who did that, but he's playing three brawler. So we probably would have end up losing anyways, even if we leveled up to level five too, but it really sucks that he kind of wrecks our streak. I would have just preferred not facing him the entirety of stage two, and we really would have been golden. Actually, if we leveled up, we wait, do we beat him without leveling up? Wait, never mind. Our, our streak's still good. He's screwed now because he leveled up early and lost. <laughs> that is good. I hate players who level up early like that. So we end up getting the perfect item on this carousel. There's this Yumi just chilling there with the with a glove. So we just go ahead and grab that and we could slam our jeweled gauntlet. We hit an Ash 2 here. This is so weird. We have a lot of upgrades, but we're running like no synergies. So it's really rough. And I also want to like try to fit in this Rammus, maybe the Riven for Defender with Wukong. This is a really tough early game. I, I honestly have no idea what to do here. Like, is the Riven better than the Ash 2? It might be because it gives me like some synergies or is like the Ash better than the Rammus? Rammus does so much work in the early game. This is really tough. Do I, I, I initially planned on playing both Kai'Sa and Lux to fit in Star Guardian the turn before, but it just really wasn't in the cards because the other options are a little stronger. But what would you guys have played here? Let me know down in the comments and make sure to timestamp it so we know what we're talking about or just say like, hey, on like 
turn and uh, no, just timestamp it because saying the turn and game number is already very confusing too but we end up getting an easy opponent so we get a nice win there we get this beautiful lux too like what are we supposed to play here we have all unsynergized two stars like holy cow we also get a locket here so i want to make use of that so i frontline my lux for some reason and then i just jam this ramus in but this was a very difficult turn 2-5 and 2-6 for me. Holy cow. By the way, as you guys are commenting down below, why don't you subscribe to the channel as well if you have not already? That, that would re really help me, boost me in the algo, whatnot, like the video, whatever YouTubers normally say. All right, we get this win streak here and thank God. Actually, should I be thanking God or should I be thanking Mortdog? Did you guys know that Mortdog backwards starts with the word God? The more you know. All right, so we get a bow there. We're checking out some of the other people. The duelist player, double bow drop when we're doing AP. Like, what the hell is this? It's technically not too late to pivot into brawlers if we like had brawlers as our front line instead of the Wukong. Never mind, this guy just is chilling on 3-1 with the Jax too. So I guess that's out of the question. Sometimes that happens. All right, we're going to level up here because I want to continue my win streak. I scouted my matchups. I'm not facing the Jax 2 guy. So it's pretty safe to level up here. If I were facing the Jax 2 guy, do not level up because if you face him, you just wasted a lot of gold. I end up facing, oh yeah, there are two AFK players this game. And even though I win streaked all of stage two, I never face the AFK players, I don't think. I face them now, but like that's after AFK is over. So I feel like matchmaking was a little unlucky this game. Also, our bench is a little weird. We're holding on to two Alistairs and the Nyla. It's costing us interest, but we have Nyla pair, and Alistair is one of the main tanks in AP comps, so I felt compelled to hold on to them. Is it going to cost me too much gold in the long run? Honestly, I don't really know. We ended up taking Celestial Blessing 1. Uh, the other choice was maybe Preparation. I, I feel like having a tiny bit of healing in AP comps is really good, because Sometimes your Talia or Soraka gets hit by stray stuff, and that tiny bit of healing is really all they need. They don't need that much because they're not getting like completely doggy bombed or something like that. Uh, but we face this really strong player, Kaisa 2, and he did his roll down, so he deserves this win. Uh, because if you roll, you deserve to hit. I only get mad when people get two stars without rolling. And there goes our streak. Unfortunate, but it is what it is. We end up getting the Alistair 2 here, so it definitely was well worth holding him. And then we're going to swap our team a little bit. We're going to get rid of this Nyla. I put the items on the Annie because she has Ox Force now. The only thing I'm unsure of here is, should I have sold the Wukong for something else? Maybe. Maybe not. Uh, but we're still doing this Lulu carry. I put a bow on both Lulu and Kaisa just to get a tiny bit more value. Ideally, the item holder would be Kaisa, but she's only one star, so I'd prefer the Lulu right now. But look at our synergies on the left. We have like no synergies. We have two Spell Slinger, two Ox Wars. It's pretty doggy right here. We need a tier here, but we don't get that. So there's so many bows. Why why in uh, non-Jax games do we get this many bows? We also can't use the glove because we already have Jeweled Gauntlet, so we're forced to take the chain. Chain was also on a one-cost unit, so that is definitely a very bad carousel for us. See, this is what I hate. This guy just got the Jax 2 really early for no reason, and he's just 50 gold. He has more gold than us. He has a stronger board. And like, is he higher health than us? He, he will be. <laughs> like, how's that even remotely fair? You know, I mean, sometimes that happens to us. I just like haven't posted those Jax games because there's nothing to learn from them. But yeah, sometimes you just get it, you know? I end up selling this Ramus for the Ribbon Pair. Ramus is a better unit, but Ribbon Pair is maybe a little better because I could play it with Wukong and potentially uh, Vi or Rel, stuff like that. Oh, look at this other AP guy. He hit both Soraka and Talium, Annie 2 and Echo 2. Uh-oh, this is looking like a replay of last game, which is really rough. And we face him. Of course we do. <laughs> so he's just playing our comp, but better. If I were to start the game and know I'd be in his position with just like Talia 2, or sorry, Talia 1, Echo 2 on stage 3-6, even though he's a little low, I probably would take it because he's got decent items. He could slam a ZZ Rot here. He has a Jeweled Gauntlet. He has Ionic Spark. And he has a tier for like a tier item. We're also likely going to get a four cost champion augment on stage 4-2. So he's probably going to get Talia 2 for free. Uh, so what do we want here? I guess on the right one, on ability cast, they gain ability power. It's not that great. 
we don't have a tier item to really stack up our LeBlanc or something like that. But if we do get a Soraka with blue buff, it's going to be really good. We get a spat there, a little awkward. It, 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 yeah, Tome is really good in AP comps. Spat, not so much, unless you get Force of Nature. Force of Nature is incredible on them because there's just too much to fit in this build. But let's roll down here. We're getting absolute garbage. We get one Yumi, like our four costs showing up in our shops is Viego, Set, and Zed, so there's not really too much. We get a Nyla 2, but we don't even want that, you know? We get a Yumi 2, but no LeBlanc 2, no Talia 1. We, we really are screwed here. I end up replacing my Lulu with the Ribbon. Just a, I, I don't know, like he's not even a synergy, but he could hold that for now. I'll itemize our LeBlanc. We have Giant Slayer Jeweled Gauntlet, so that's really nice. I'm also going to slam this Sunfire Cape. And then this last bow, it could be either ZZ Rot portals. We don't need Static Shiv. Maybe Second Giant Slayer wouldn't be so horrible. Uh, but yeah, like, look at the spot we're in. I don't even know what went wrong this game. I think everyone else just high rolled. Like, this guy's blue buff Sona. He's also two star Sona, two star LeBlanc, which we could have stabilized with. But we get bailed out a little bit. We get the four cost augment, but we kind of expected it. We were kind of playing around it. So let's grab the Talia here. We need to roll down again because, um, by the way, during the roll down, I should have sold the LeBlanc first and then dropped the items on Talia because I'm always playing her. So just in case I hit more copies of the LeBlanc, I should have sold her before. Um, can we fit this Urgot in? We just really want four spell slinger. Also, like, who cares about Lux and Yumi? Just throw the bump at the front to get locket value because we have double locket. And then I guess from here, it's not looking too bad. It's just not looking good. I mean, look at our opponent, though. He's got two star Talia, three item. He's got Ionic Spark and a Chain Bess. Like, what did we do so differently? And he's like infinite HP. Ah, that's really rough. I, yeah. There's, <laughs> I don't know what to say. We somehow beat him. I, I really don't know how, but. I'd rather be in his position. By the way, that guy actually has four Talias, not just three. Uh, but we beat him because our front line's stronger than his. He, he needs like a tiny bit of front line. He just pretty much had zero. But this guy's Belva too great during stage four. You just need to replace her during stage five. Um, is he? Oh, he's using it as Jack's item holder. Hilarious. So once he gets a Jax two, we are what do you call it? Like we're screwed, right? But he doesn't have it yet, so that's good news for us. Um, and I believe he's getting contested by the other Jax player. So good on good on these other Jax players. Like knocking this guy out. Hopefully he gets a bot four because holy cow. He would be really scary if he has a Jax too. His items are just so perfect. So we probably want the tier. Oh, well, sorry. We wanted the spatula first, but we didn't get that. So we end up going for the tier, which we do end up getting. But hitting that spatula for a tactician's crown would have been out of this world bailout. Hitting the Talia Champion Augment is kind of like the student loan bailout. It's like, uh, is that another Talia too? Okay, but it's kind of like the student loan bailout where it's like, it definitely helps and stuff, but getting that Tactician's Crown, however, would have been like the financial crisis bailout type of levels, but we didn't get it. And both Talia players are both Talia 2. I'm hard stuck Talia 1, so this game is looking doomed. If we had the Tactician's Crown, maybe we have a shot at competing, but... Honestly, comparing this game with the last one, we didn't really hit in both games, but last game, there are a lot of very obvious mistakes that we could point out to. One was slamming the redemption. Two was leveling up early on stage three, five. But this game, I, I can't really see like that many things that we did that were like glaringly wrong, you know? Like obviously there's still things you can improve on, but like, was there anything that was like glaringly wrong with this game other than just rolling down on 4-1 and not even getting a LeBlanc 2 or something like that? It's just really tough. I, yeah, and then not getting the tactician's crown on that thing. So we're just down like half an item. It, it's a really rough situation. I, I really don't know what the difference between the two games are. We're for sure going to level up to eight and then roll down. So I sell that uh, ribbon just to make it so I don't get confused. From this dragon, we get glove. Uh, we get negatron. So not really buildable items. And then we get this thing. I guess we could build. We already have ionic spark. Do we build archangels? Probably blue buff. But then what do we build with the other stuff? Last Whisper, Jesus, Runons, QSS. They're all really bad. Holy cow. So I think we do Hand of Justice and then Ice Cream Cone. But we need to roll down right now and pray we hit because we're at 12 life. And we do not. Yay. Thank you, Mordog. Very fun game. 
Maybe I should have played the Soraka blue buff, but the thing is I have the Talia augment, so you can't even pivot out of it. So that's a little unfortunate. So we're just going to run random crappers here and then just try to slam the items. Like, holy cow, five star guardian, maybe that does something. We don't have a uh, Shojin, so technically it's good, but we don't have anyone next to our Lux for this ice cream cone, but um, I guess we could static shift Kaisa as well. But if you had a choice, it's probably ice cream cone. I should probably just slam this admin spat right do we have leblanc in we don't even have leblanc in so never mind um uh, talia two no this is talia one player is it yeah it is so there are three other talia players this game that's actually crazy because there are two two star talias and then there's this guy as well so i guess we just go six not much you could do in these situations you know like sometimes you just don't hit and remember i just started my play session just now i got a six and i'm like oh if i get if i had an eighth i'd probably just give up but we got the six it's still in that like coping stage where we could still make it so look at that i instant queue up this next game is probably a funnier game that you'll see because it's just based off of the last jacks video that we made and you'll see why in just a moment so we started off we get a rod also keep in mind my mood right now i went to bed the night before thinking i already made the tournament and then I wake up, realize I have to play, but I had this family event I had to do. So I did that, and then I just queued up, got six after not hitting. So just watch this game, imagining that mental state in me right now. So we get a decent start here. We have like half a locket. We could go maybe like Last Whisper Locket Duelist. We have some Brawlers and we have a Rage Blade, so it's potentially a Jax game. And then we just get the scope weapons here. So I make a mistake, you just need to click on it right away. I, I, I hesitated one moment, and the reason why you need to click right away is just in case people scout you. And then I also should slam Rage Blade right now. Um, but I'm thinking about the other stuff in my turn, and I definitely want to level up here, play Brawlers, and just Gangplank in the back line. So even if you slam the Augment early and people scout it, you still might be contested because sometimes people have stuff that's just as good as you. Maybe they have RFC already with like a brawler crest. But we scout around. This one guy has a redemption with brawlers, a couple jeweled gauntlet players. So it's going to be an AP heavy lobby. There might only be that redemption guy contesting us, but even then he might not be. Uh, he does have trade sector though, so it's a little scary. But overall, maybe like one contester tops this game. That's to be expected though. So you can't expect to be uncontested jacks, right? It's just by far like the best comp right now. But you guys remember the other day when we did the brawler video, we had one game where there are four jacks players, me being one of them, and I, I still didn't pivot. So at least we win this early round here. We're really chilling. This gangplank with rage blade gonna put in a ton of work. We do want duelists on him, but yeah, we have the kale there, so we could drop him in. I probably should play Lee Sin over Vi right now. Lee Sin's a bit more tanky. I actually misplay here. There's a few, oh my God, this, okay. So this other battle mage guy going Jax, I guess. Out of nowhere. So it's not even the redemption guy, but I make a mistake here. I should have played Fiora and Lee Sin over Kale and Vi because I just need three tanks for my gangplank to ramp up. And I'm not saying we would have won this round, but it would have been a lot better, you know? Cause we have our damage already. Why do we need a Kale? Fiora gives Duelist, and she's tanky. Luckily, we win every anyways, but I really should just be buying this Fiora. I must have just not seen her because I don't even look at the shop even though I have extra gold. That's actually incredibly unfortunate because I don't know if you guys noticed, but in every single game today, we've been buying out all our early game shops to zero gold every single time. And the one time I don't do it is like the one time I actually have something worth keeping. So that's a little silly, but whatever. We still don't put the lease in here, so I just didn't see that play. And then we end up facing the brawler guy. And he's got four brawlers. So there, there goes our streak, right? Remember the most important thing we talked about when we were doing contested brawlers is you just need a lot of HP to outlast the other guy a lot of times. And not getting the win streak gonna pretty much hurt us a bunch here. And he's probably gonna go on a win streak instead. Luckily, we get a pretty good loss, just two units. So we're still in a good spot. It just, you really wanna beat the other guy. If there was a bow on this carousel, I'd probably just take it to grief him but I think we should focus on our utility items right now. So there's a chain with Jax, so I end up taking that. It's a little risky though. It's gonna help out my early game a ton, but the only buildable chain item on Jax is Titan's Resolve. Don't get me wrong, it's probably my favorite underrated item on him, but unless I get the bow, this chain vest on my Jax is completely useless and I might have to end up selling him. We're gonna do an admin check though, 
And we get uh, two good ones. I think the left one's the best attack speed. I don't really care that much about health. Brawlers have so much anyways, but obviously stacking it is even better. But this, what this Jax does, it allows us to stabilize our early game really hard because we have scope weapons. We have four brawler. Four brawler's the big power spike. Pretty much none of these boards can beat us, it's just like how none of the boards can beat the other guy. So even though we faced him and he broke our streak, we're both probably going to be like the two highest health players throughout stage two and probably stage three. And we get a nice win there. Phony frontline is honestly a counter to Jax later in the game, so we do have to watch out there. But we're going to keep four brawler in. We're facing someone who's definitely going recon. And, well, maybe not definitely, but he's using them right now. And he's got the double Cho'Gath. He's got Kai'Sa Vayne. So he's in a decent spot. No Last Whisper. He's itemizing his Vayne, actually, not the Kai'Sa. So... I don't personally like doing that, but hey, to each their own, right? Uh, we're able to sneak out a win here, which is really, really nice because obviously we want to preserve HP as we talked about before. Off the Krugs, we get a belt. That's decent. That could build a Sunfire Cape later or a Guard Breaker. Get a Rod for Ionic. We're looking pretty good. If this item wasn't on our Jax, we'd be in a very good spot, but it is. So we can't just slam the Sunfire right away, unfortunately. But hey, I'm not going to complain. We're going to buy this other Jax. We could just rip the bow off the carousel. Unlikely, but it is possible. Here, I'm debating slamming the guard breaker, and I'm not really sure if I should or shouldn't. I ended up not doing it, though. It's really debatable, because, like, Sunfire is just so good, especially since there's a different brawler player as well. And I, I, I don't know. Like, I need this bow on my Jax. If not, he's just useless, right? So... It's such a rough situation, but I end up not slamming it because I get a Jax here and then next augment is probably a champion augment and I'm just going to pick Jax there because I have four brawler out. So I'm probably just going to two star the Jax right away. So yeah, it, it's a little bit of a weird situation. There's the augment we were talking about. We just grab evasion and then we get a little lucky here. So we get this extra Jax in our shop. So we could actually just sell this one, slam the Sunfire Cape and then complete a Jax too by picking up the orb. Should I have kept all copies? Ugh, that's really tough to say, really tough to say, but I end up doing this. Let me know your thoughts on this one, because this one's confusing, but I sell it, slam the Sunfire. I think it's the best course of action, because this Sunfire Cape is going to end up saving a lot of HP. Either save HP or whack people harder. I end up doing a small roll down just because I want the six Brawler. It's the biggest power spike ever, or at least put admin in. So we drop that, and then uh, we could probably replace... Lee Sin for this Echo, but we get two star Lee Sin, so not anymore. Uh, we should probably stop rolling here. 20 is fine. If we stopped at 30, would have been fine too. The other Jax player has Riven 2 and Riven Augment, only one Jax, so that's nice. It's always hard to tell how aggressive you want to roll whenever you're contested, but if you're at 30, like we already had five Brawler, it's good enough in most cases, right? Even if we don't have the LeBlanc for admin, arguably we could just save gold and just rush level eight instead. Both lines of play, I think, are fine. Maybe staying at 30 gold would have been better, though. There's not really much of anything in this shop, uh, so we'll kind of just skip to the next fight. On this carousel, we have to think of what we want. Probably Negatron. That builds both Ionic Spark and Quicksilver, so that's our first pick for sure. Bow would be nice for Giant Slayer because there's going to be a lot of value here. This guy's got a Redemption. There's the other Brawler player. There's I think there's two reroll players. So there's definitely a lot of things we could do with that. Uh, we probably beat this guy. Actually, his Senate 2, is she going to smurf? No, Jax 2 with Brawler too strong. <laughs> what, a, what a comp. They're probably nerfing this soon, but it is what it is. We get a little lucky here. No one really takes cloaks, and we just so happen to need two of them. Not much in the shop here, so we'll skip ahead again. We end up facing the other Jax guy, and he finally got his Jax 2. We have better items, but we position pretty badly, so our LeBlanc gets picked off. And does that end up cost? Yeah, it does end up costing us a fight, because I think his... Oh no, his Jax didn't target our Jax, but... Yeah, definitely not how you want to start it off, because we just lose a unit for free. He's going to win no matter what, because he's 6 Brawler, but maybe we kill off more units if we position better, right? Because um, you just should never have that happen to you. But, of course, again... Still would have lost this. Would it have been maybe a three-unit loss instead of a four-unit loss? Maybe. I guess only only a fortune teller would know at this point. We get this LeBlanc in our next shot. By the way, we would have won every single round if it wasn't for that other brawler guy. I just want to note that here. But yeah, do you complete this or not? I actually don't think so. 
We're going to do a really big level 7 roll down, so we're likely going to hit a Soraka 1, or we're just going to play like 6 Brawlers plus a random unit. We don't need this LeBlanc, right? LeBlanc 1, LeBlanc 2, when she has no Spell Slinger, is it actually going to do anything? I really, really don't think so. So we end up not buying her to save 1 gold, and I guess 2 gold, because we would have lost the interest here, because we'd be at 47, and then we'd also have uh, one less gold because when we sell her she would have costed us nine gold but you only sell her for eight gold so overall i think not picking her up is perfectly good we get some gold we get a bow we get a glove we get a tier not the ideal item combo there's the soraka we were talking about but yeah let's focus on the roll down first we'll think about items later riven we need riven too do we stop here i think we should have stopped we get the riven too but like was that upgrade actually worth it? We're rolling for three things right now. Renekton 2, Riven 2, and Soraka. The only things we had pairs of was Riven and Renekton at the time. So if you're really only rolling for two things that you can actually upgrade, because we're not rolling to zero, right? We're probably stopping at most at 10 gold, ideally 20 like we did here. It's a pretty low chance of hitting the Riven 2. That's the only major upgrade, so I probably shouldn't have rolled all the way down there. Probably just stick around like 30 or 40 gold and kind of call it a day after that. These items, little scuff. Do we build the Hand of Justice on Jax? I really don't like it, but maybe it's greedy to not build it. The other option is going to be Thieves' Gloves. The reason why I don't like Hand of Justice is, one, it's not that great of an item on him because I don't like the healing builds. Two, if we build that, we have a bow. What's the bow going to build? Another Jax item, right? And then if we build that into a Jax item, what's that extra glove going to do? Not much. It's probably turning into a Thieves Gloves anyway, so that's why we just slammed the Thieves. We'll drop it on our Echo for now. Echo gives us Aegis. It's not bad, right? Um, but we'd definitely prefer to have 8 Brawler at this point. But yeah, the Augment choices, Makeshift versus Brawler Heart. It's obviously Brawler Heart is just such a good one. If you don't get that option, then Makeshift is a perfectly viable option because all your Brawlers are going to be super tanky. But yeah, like you just have to make the TG here. It's a little unfortunate. This tier can turn into a Redemption maybe. And then the bow, obviously any bow item is good for us. Also with the tier, you could potentially itemize your Soraka. But look at this. This is the funny part I want to mention in this game. Did you see what happened? This guy just recombobulated all his Brawlers. He is like such a you-know-what, but you know what? I have to probably PayPal him or something like that because he just saved our game completely because he pivoted because he's scared to play Contested Brawler. What a champion. He had Jax too, and let's look at his life total. He's like the same life as us. He pretty much had the same board as us. Why did he sell it? Just look at what happens to him the next couple of rounds because I think he made a major mistake. I'm very happy he did it because we got a free game because of that. But holy cow, he literally pivoted for no reason. And I think the reason why, I said no reason, but I'm giving a reason now. I checked his LP and he was at like 560 LP. So he really just wanted fourth place. And maybe he thought he couldn't do it if he played Brawlers. But I think with only two Brawler players, you could definitely go fourth place and maybe he could qualify that way hearts out to this guy i just checked and he just barely missed the cutoff and he's on the waiting list let's grab tier on this carousel by the way there are two tiers so that's a pretty easy pickup don't tell me no 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 so i have Jax two right and i'm about to hit a soraka two i'm pretty far from Jax three i should just blue buff my soraka right now I get it. Giant Slayer is like the best item on Jax, but the second best item on Jax that you could build with bow is like very marginally worse whereas blue buff soraka versus not blue buff soraka is like the biggest difference in the world so i really think i should have just picked up the tier there um but yeah this guy i, I feel bad because he barely missed and spoiler alert he does not do well in this game and maybe if he just was playing normally and there wasn't this whole tournament thing going on he probably would have just kept playing jacks and probably would have maybe top forward anyways you know um but oh vi actually clutches out the win here holy cow and this is the guy that we just faced, the Recombobulator guy. So, yeah, I don't know. He also wastes his Battle Mage Augment now. There's not really many comps that use it other than, like, Viego. But Viego kind of bad right now. But at this point, we're kind of just chilling. We're going to level up to level 8 on 5-1 and just add in 8 Brawlers because that's what you do whenever you have Brawler Crest or Brawler Heart. You just want 8 Brawlers ASAP. Um, it's just too big of a power spike. It's stronger than Jax 3. 
You guys already know this. You guys watched the Jax video, so I don't need to link it in a card on the top right. In this dragon, we get a Jax. <laughs> Very beautiful. That's all we can ask for. We get some gold. And then we get no blue buff, so punished a little bit, but we get a redemption. That's more than enough. Just take a look at how much gold we have. 94. That's an easy level up. 50 gold to roll down with. This is the dream right now. Holy cow. There's the Sejuani. There's our 8 brawler. Take out this Echo. Don't need him. I, I think we could stop rolling here. Like, we don't have Sejuani pair, so we only have Soraka pair. The only thing we could hit within 10 gold reasonably is Soraka 2. She has no items, so do we even care about her upgrade? So, yeah, we, we did a couple extra rolls that we didn't need to. Uh, apart from that, like, Renekton 2, who cares? Jax 3, we're so far off, so no need to roll. Sejuani 2, we, we only have one copy, so we can't realistically hit it in, like, 10 gold. So, yeah, that extra roll or two, probably not needed. Uh, we beat this guy pretty handedly. Like, the game's pretty much free here just because the guy pivoted, and I'm really glad that happened. I'm just going to fast forward to Carousel here. So the picks are either Jeweled Gauntlet or Hextech Gunblade. Hextech Gunblade is good if you have Ascension for Jax or like a ton of damage, and we don't really have that, so no point getting that. You could put the Jeweled Gauntlet on Soraka if you want to like get the perfect Jax item. It'd probably be Quicksilver at this point in the game. But yeah, everyone like pour one out for our, our bro CZK for pivoting out of this Jax build. Also, we hit Jax 3. I fast-forwarded a bit because, like, we're not making any decisions anymore this game. We're just winning out every single round. All right, fine. Actually, I'll show you guys the roll down just because people like seeing people hit 3 stars. We're 1 off Janna. Whenever we're, you're, like, 2 off with 50 gold, you might as well just send it. And that's exactly what I do here. I'm checking the weather. It's not that great. Uh, also, we just don't have room for this Janna. I was debating going level 9 with the weather, but yeah, we just rolled down, hit the Jax 3. Very nice. That was right before Carousel. The only other decision we made was on this item. So you could go Bramble, but we don't really have anyone to put it on. Zephyr's pretty good, but our fights last so short or so long that Zephyr isn't that good. So I just get the Jeweled Gauntlet for Soraka. Fast forwarding a little bit. I mean, the guy we're facing off with at the end isn't like that weak by any means, right? He's Kaisa 3. He's just hit Cho'Gath 3, Ramus 3. But he has his items on Vayne. I just don't understand that. Like, I would just... Would you sell... No, he probably can't sell the Vayne. Like, I have too much HP, so no matter what, I win. Even if he wins this round and then hits Vayne 3, I just have to beat him once, you know? And stupid fight RNG happens all the time, especially with recons. There's going to be one fight where this Kai'Sa just ints or the Vayne just ints into me, and then we'll just win out through that. But yeah, it's not like um, we're beating really weak boards. Like, this dude's pretty strong, right? But Jax 3 just caps out so hard like that, and... Yeah, hearts out to my guy. I hope he makes it in off the wait list because we really need to thank him. But let's move on into the final game because after this, we weren't close enough yet because I saw the leaderboards. We we're still ranked like 200 at this point or like 210, and that just wasn't safe enough for me. We're at 569, so we run it back one last time. I probably played the weirdest team ever in this game. Like, this game was just super weird overall. And I don't know what it is with me and playing AP comps when I really need to just top four because it's just so risky and it's so nerve-wracking because the difference between one-star Talia and two-star Talia is just absolutely insane. When you play Duelist, one-star Zed and two-star Zed, who really cares because you're just playing Lockets, right? Uh, when you're playing Jax, you just need the two-star Jax. When you need Kai'Sa, you just need the two-star Kai'Sa. So we take the Band of Thieves again. I don't know what it is, but every time I play AP, I always get Band of Thieves. And I don't really have the items for Sure Shot Heart. If not, I probably would have taken that. But Band of Thieves, more than welcome. I really like this start. Let's make this Nasus 2. Let's play the Gadgetines. We got a Zoe drop early on, and we kept our entire shop because I just want a good early game. So we play the Gadgetines right now. Let's see what item we get. Bloodthirster, eh, not that great, but whatever. It's for sure an Ionic Slam. I think we just go for AP comp here. In the last two AP games that we played, we kind of got really unlucky. Like, we didn't hit in both of those games. So I forget if this one was different, honestly. Like, I, I can't remember. But all the signs are pointing to AP because we have Gadgetines. Items are good. Band of Thieves pretty usable on, like, a lot of the random units that we play. And what I love about this comp is that there's so many different options. When you play Duelist, you just click on all the Duelists, and if you don't hit, unlucky. 
when you play jacks, like you just need to hit the three star jacks. Same for Kaisa. So when you're playing this comp, it's a lot different because you have a lot of different outs. For example, we could stabilize in stage three or stage four with a LeBlanc two or Sona two. And then for our late game carry, we could play either Soraka, we could play Talia. We could also go into the legendaries because most of them use AP items. Also in the mid game, we could also use Zoe. I forgot to mention that too. You could do Luden's Echo build. You could do all sorts of random nonsense. That's really cool. Back to the storyline, in order to qualify, again, around like rank 200 is approximately safe. So we just needed a top four here. At the time, it was like three hours left on the timer or maybe two hours left until they took the snapshot. Would you guys have forced a different comp maybe? Try to go for a top four, just like play Duelist or something like that? Or would you kind of do what I did here? I think there are two Jax players right now. So thank God we didn't go for that. I would not want to be triple contested in my or double content is it triple or double whatever like three jacks players in a game where i really just need a top four i make a pretty big mistake here obviously i want tier but since i can't get that i should just get the three cost glove instead i go for the chain god knows why though in my head i was like what if i get jeweled lotus on my next augment but that's complete garbage thought process because it's so low chance to get that i could have just built the jeweled gauntlet and just had a huge power spike, but instead I got the chain vest for Sunfire Cape. That's just like a complete lapse of judgment there, honestly. Um, but we faced this really strong guy. We're also not even on a streak. This guy's Lux too. Also, I grouped up and I literally, as soon as the round ended, right before I saw the person's board, I was like, oh crap, I remember scouting a Lux player. I shouldn't be grouped up like this. And wouldn't you know it, we end up facing him. So we take like a pretty big loss there. Two units, I guess not that big, just like average loss. Um, but now we spread out. It's too late now, though. We get a Sunfire Cape. That's really nice. For the Gadgetine items, Warmogs and Sunfire are so good early on. Unlucky that our Thieves Glove is on Nasus because he would use these items much better. But unfortunately, like, I just have to Thieves Glove my frontline, like, non-synergy item holder. I guess he has Mascot, so he does have a synergy. It's just, like, Nasus is the best unit for it. He uses AP, he uses AD, he uses attack speed, he uses tank items. He's just the best holder for it. It's just really unfortunate that I can't put the Gadgetine items on him or the Ionic Spark. Instead, it's on my one-star Poppy, who ends up just dying a lot. Uh, so we get a sword, we get a glove, and some units so i guess let's sell to 30 by the way i guess it's another double thieves glove game I, what is it with me playing ap getting band of thieves and then getting more gloves it's really crazy right this happens so often i already mentioned before right these are not hand-picked games these are just my last six games so it's actually crazy that all the ap games ended up being really similar the first two games we also didn't hit so they're similar in that way as well Honestly, I can't even spoil this game because I forgot what happened. So we're just going to look over it and see as like we watch it right now. This guy's got the Ramus stun of the century. Is my Yumi able to clean off this Kale? You know, if, he, if she cleaned that Kale and did like two more autos on the GP, we actually win that round. But unfortunate. Maybe if we slammed the chain vest on our Poppy, we could have lived. So late game specialist, we're never reaching level 9 in this meta. So that's useless. Item grab bag. Risky. Because... If we get an attack speed or attack damage item, it's completely useless, right? We're just trying to get top four here. Tiny Titans is probably the pick anyways, but just because item grab bag is so risky and I just don't need to take a risk right now, it's just 100% Tiny Titans in this situation. But if you're playing for real, let's say like maximizing LP gains in the long run, you could argue that taking the item grab bag's the move there. Uh, but we get Tiny Titans, it's whatever. We are at 113 health, so we can just slowly bleed out, collect our top four, and qualify. Is it that simple? Well, I guess we'll have to find out, right? Um, so this Trogad demolishes us, but luckily the rest of his team is just one star, or most of his team is one star, even the Trogath was. So we just clean him up here. We're not on a big win streak, not on a big lose streak, so we're kind of like medium econ right now. And oh my god, I guess it was a Zed game. We could have built Locket... Oh, uh, geez, we could have Thieves Glove Locket, but Zed just wasn't in the cards at the beginning when we, when we thought about it. So what do we play here? Do we play the Jinx for Prankster? I don't really think she's worth a unit. We have a Locket up front. That's why you see the Yumi up there. Um, so we just want to get some value from the Locket. Our Nasus is up there too with the ZZ Rot, but he gets Zephyr. So getting your ZZ Rot holder Zephyr is one of the worst things ever because 
It just means the rest of your team dies while the Zerot spawns, and then no one's there to deal damage. But this guy would have won anyways. He's running Duelist. He's got a bunch of upgrades. He also has Thrill the Hunt with the Zephyr, so it's just really good in short-term fights. If we end up getting this tier off this carousel, it's literally just GG already, and we do. So that's incredibly nice, because getting one tier item is just so critical in any AP comp. It's not mandatory on Talia, because you could do triple item Talia with like five star guardian or something like that or do something like what this how is everyone every time i'm contested talia they always get it first and he got spell spell slinger spatula sorry for the tilt but like that's an insane high roll is it not and this happened every single talia game we played today oh no keep in mind as soon as i top four i, I get to go to bed right or just do something else with my life so i'm just like please don't make me play more also it's getting really close to the deadline i'm getting like massive deja vu though like all three of these games so similar like contesters hit first T contesters get really good augments they get really good items we start out with band of thieves and we get like more thieves gloves for some reason we mess up our item on carousel sometimes because we didn't slam the jeweled gauntlet this game i think in the other one we built the redemption the other game I forget, but probably something similar happened. Uh, we take the L here. We're honestly in an okay spot because we took Tiny Titans. We're at 77 life. We're down a silver augment. I guess in those games of Talia already, we went third and fifth. So we're still net positive LP. So we're still chilling, I guess. I cleaned up my board a little bit there. I'm expecting a four cost augment again. Oh, remember the other game? We didn't get the four cost augment. Does that happen again this game? No way it happens again, right? I honestly forgot. Even though I just played this game, all the games were so similar. Like, how can I remember? But we need to do this massive roll down because everyone else hits but us. Uh, let's sell the Sejuani. Probably sell the Nylas as well. We get Soraka. So a couple of different outs. Zoe, we could do the Gadgetines for a bit. Um, I should keep rolling, but we're running low on time. I need to fit like a real unit in. There's Echo. Holy cow. We have two Echoes. Oh my God. Bailed out. Sell fast and boom. Put the fake Warmogs on Echo. What items do we build? Probably Bramble Echo. We can't afford to wait for a Sunfire. And we can't build Protector's Vow because we need to save the tier. Here it's really tricky because do I slam the Spear of Shojin and just play Talia or play Spear of Shojin Soraka in case I just randomly hit Soraka? Or do I greed the blue buff so I have better items for both options? This is really tough. I honestly don't know what the right play is here. I, I think I should build something, though. Either the Hextech Gunblade or the Shojin. And, oh, we get... Okay, so here I'm like, no, fuck it. We're high rolling for Talia, right? The Urgot one, we just don't have room for it. The Echo one is okay, but we already have Echo 2, so it's not going to help us that much. I really just want to re-roll this to hit Talia. And looking at the left-hand side and our synergies, very high chance to do it. So we re-roll... Get another Echo one. We get Be the Stone. But then I remembered something. Let's look around a little bit. This other guy's going Talia. So I'm like, you know what? Let me just try doing something a little different. Because I don't have enough gold to hit Talia too. And I, I don't even have items for her. So I'm like, why don't I just play this Nunu for now with Thieves Gloves. And just see how he does for me. Because remember in the other game, the Fiddlesticks really bailed us out. Even though we didn't really have any real carry. I was thinking maybe the same thing happens, but with this Nunu. We roll RFC on his first Thieves Gloves. So I'm already a little sad there because those are obviously really bad items for him. But I'm like, is this good? I also thought it was his carry augment. I didn't actually read the Nunu augment that closely. It's his support one. So our team gets AP as the fight goes on, which is good. Don't get me wrong. But I think the see me rolling one was what I wanted at this time because I don't really have a carry right now. We're facing this Jax player. Do we we actually beat him? Holy cow. Clutch Zoe. Very nice. Imagine if our Zoe had like a Shojin that whole time. We'd win that fight very easily. Um, but yeah, like I, I didn't know if I'm actually playing Talia or Soraka because uh, it seems that it's such a popular comp right now in only the games where I go for it. Maybe it's a mistake, though. I, I probably should have just taken the Talia now that I look back at it. But I also don't like when other people get the legendary augments. Okay, look, this other guy's playing Talia. See, we weren't able to scout before properly because I probably scouted somewhere that I skipped. But there were two Talia players, right? And this guy also has Star Guardian spat. So I was like, I'm going to be super contested on this Talia. 
So if I take it, I have to hit, but it's going to be really hard to. This guy has four copies of Talia. The other guy has at least two. He probably has three. So it's like, was this Nunu actually a bad pick then? Now that I remember, maybe it was good. Maybe it was good to take it just because I'd be turbo contested. For sure, it probably was the Soraka in the first round, but it is what it is. If we get this tier here on that Syndra, that would have been sick, but someone else takes it. So... I guess we go for Jeweled Gauntlet here, or... Yeah, we already have Bionic, right? So yeah, just grab the JG, call it a day. But we're in the same exact situation as before, so I definitely should just slam this JG Shoujin. And I do that now. I sell, or I put my Soraka in, and then I'm just going to play some random garbage board. This is why I thought this game was really interesting, because I just end up playing, like, random crap all day. That's honestly what I love about this comp though, because there's so many different ways to build Talia and Soraka. I know some of my friends are like, oh, this is a standard build. They show me like a six spell slinger version. This other guy's like, no, you don't do it that way. You do the one with like Zoe, Echo for Prankster. And then like, sometimes you play Gadgetine, sometimes you don't. And then there are other people who go for like the Star Guardian builds. There, there's so many different ways to play this that I think, and then for Soraka, there are like even more variations, right? So I think it's definitely a very fun, flexible comp, and like you could do definitely a lot of different things with it. Do we end up winning this one here? No, but it ends up being a good loss, so at least we got that going for us. Such a close fight, though, in overtime with the Zoe Ticks. But again, we're really scared. We're still, at the end of the day, one-star Soraka versus like two copies of Talia on one guy and then a two-star copy of Talia on the third guy. Let's check the admin. Um, combat start, gain mana. That's probably the best one, especially since we don't have a blue buff. And another thing to consider is we took Tiny Titans, right? So we should theoretically have more health than everyone else. But when you look at the right-hand side, we're pretty much middle of the pack. So we're, we're essentially down a silver augment, which isn't the end of the world, but it is like a combat power level loss, right? That doesn't mean Tiny Titans is bad. It was definitely the pick there. It's just... Looking at like the current state of the game, like at the end of the day, we're still 57 health at stage four six, and at stage four seven, we're at 49, which is in the bottom four. At least two other players got knocked out, so at worst, it's a six, and then I just have to play like one or two more games. I'm a little sad right now. It probably save us a lot of HP by slamming the Spear of Shojin, but what if we just get a tier here off this thing? We could have built blue buff. We didn't, but imagine if we did. Would it have been worth it? I'm actually not too sure. Let's grab a Sunfire here. That's really all there is that we could do. Let's level up. We don't have much gold, but we just have to play a bunch of units because whenever you play these AP builds, you want Tactician's Crown, right? It's just the best item by far. And the reason why is because there's so many different builds, so you have so many different units you could slot in and like tech in and out. So that's why leveling up is really good whenever you play this. We get, we luck out. I'm not going to lie here. We luck out, get the Soraka 2, get the Alistair 2. Is it luck though? Because debatably we could have hit it earlier or have more health because we hit the one star copy earlier and kind of stabilize out. But let me know your thoughts. By stage five, one, people do typically have the two star four cost carry anyways. Like just because we missed on the rolls before doesn't mean we got lucky now because in a grand scheme of things, just because of the way that kind of works. But pretty good loss here. Another thing in this game that's really nice is all our losses are tiny like we've taken pretty much throughout stages four and five one or two unit losses every time uh, there's a sona too i don't even know how to fit all these units you guys see what i mean like i want to play like maybe four heart is two hard enough is sona better than yumi do i need three star guardian for my two star echo there's so many different decisions to make here in terms of like what you want to play on your team uh, we end up dropping the nyla dropping the star guardian and is that correct honestly guys i i don't know TG on Nyla probably has more value than TG on Zoe. The Sona probably better than the Yumi. We lose Star Guardian. <sighs> this is, uh, yeah, I, I don't really know. But we're facing off against this guy. Our Nunu, very tanky because he has the extra Gadgetine item right now. So he actually ends up doing a lot of work here. What do you guys think about this Nunu? Has he been working out? Would you have taken something else on that augment round? We win this fight here pretty handedly, right? Well, not handedly, but we get a nice win. Any win here is good. Ideally, like I smack them for 20 HP every round, but that's just not possible with the team I have right now. Um, another thing to kind of take into account is 
our Nunu items are really good. He just has to live. If I make it to this carousel and get a really good tank item for him, maybe like a redemption, maybe a dragon claw, it's pretty much GG, even if he's one star, because he just stacks up so much. But look at this Soraka. <laughs> I, I need a third Soraka item too. We have so many Thieves Gloves that it kind of is a little weird. By the way, one little trick. Because Zoe has Prankster, you could kind of put her up in the front a little bit. Maybe not all the way to the front, but kind of second row is a pretty good place for her. Here, would you take the Nunu and pray for a Nunu 2-star, or would you just take an Archangels for our Soraka? I ended up just taking the Archangels because a lot of the good Gadgetine items fit on Nunu anyways. But I wonder what the chances or odds are for hitting a 2-star Nunu if we just all end right here. The thing is, we just needed we just needed 4th place, so I'd rather just take the immediate power spike with the Archangel staff. Oddly enough, I think this Nunu augment works better with Soraka carry than it does with Talia carry, because Talia needs to wipe people quickly, whereas Soraka, she likes the ramp up, because that's pretty much what Heart does, so I don't need to run the Heart trait for her to ramp up, because Nunu's Contagious Laughter does it anyways. I'd do a laugh now, but like I'd feel too uncomfortable doing it. But this Talia is just not killing our Raka. Holy cow, how did our Raka live? I don't even understand. His Talia has Jeweled Gauntlet Giant Slayer. Maybe it didn't crit. Maybe like I'm out of Giant Slayer range. Looking at all oh, Jax 3, I, oh my god, these guys are scary. There's like Raka 2, Jax 3, Talia 2, but we beat the Talia. Uh, we, we're also hard stuck Nunu 1. It's probably just going to be like that for the rest of the game. It, it, it's, it's okay. I'm going to do a couple random swaps. Sometimes you just swap randomly so that people can't position around you. Oh my god, he's got blue buff Raka, 3 star Jax. Jesus, and our Nunu gets demolished right away by this Jax. Oh no, so he doesn't even get to ramp up. Luckily, the Sedge ult misses our backline. But yeah, they're... <laughs> There's, there's no way we're winning this fight, which is really unfortunate because this guy is 14 health. We need him to get knocked out because then we get top four and then I could stop playing TFT until the next patch. But we're top five. Good enough. If we get fifth here, we have time to play maybe one or two more games and try to get like a second or a first. Uh, but let's see what item we want here. I'm going to do a little scout, see the value of Bramble Vest. I think it's Warmogs. Like, Giant Slayer on Nunu is a little greedy. You don't want tank items, or you don't want damage items on Nunu if you have Sunfire and Ionic already. You just need them to live, and Warmogs is great at doing that. I'd prefer a Dragon Claw, but you know what? We don't get to choose. Uh, this other Sunfire I'll put on Echo, and I'll kind of drop him on the other side. We have this Zephyr on our Zoe, so I'm going to do a Cringe Scout and try to just Zephyr people, you know? You got to do what you got to do. I got it from Thieves Gloves. I did not build it manually, and... We Zephyr the worst thing ever here. We Zephyr a Fiddlesticks. How? That's the worst unit to Zephyr ever. Oh my god, because he <laughs> he does the same thing no matter what. So we get run over here by this two-star Jax player. Oh my god, this is a big loss. And remember, the guy in fifth place right now, he's a three-star Jax. So if we're losing a two-star Jax, granted, he's got two-star Urgot and two-star Fiddlesticks, but like... We're at 5 HP right now. Like, what place right now, write down in the comments, what place do you think I got this game? I could roll down 75 gold for Nunu 2. It's a little risky. It's just so hard to hit legendaries on 8. So I opt to go for the guaranteed extra unit. And I'm going to pick up the LeBlanc here. I don't need this Yumi anymore. I already have Mascot from Alistair, and I, I can't fit 4 hearts. I'm going to play this Leona right now because we're facing a Brawler player. We learned from the last day, or yesterday's video, that Leona completely counters the Brawler comp. So I'm going to try to use that right now to my advantage. And we don't end up facing them, but it gives us Aegis anyways against Talia. So it's just a solid unit overall. I'm looking at the other fights because I'm like, I'm probably out here. But look at this Talia, like just not killing anything. And then look at this Soraka smurfing and targeting the Talia. She stopped targeting for a bit, but she kills the dragon claw guy and then now she just hits him and i have all this contagious laughter and like so much ap from archangels that she just wipes with the three hit holy cow and just like that the other people knock each other out and just like that we are in fourth place now can we even fit this janna in the weather's like rainy i mean it's not horrible right i, I don't know if it's better than anything it, it must be better than maybe leblanc or something but I should probably sell this Annie and move the Thieves Gloves onto Leona because she has to do work, right? Is it Annie or LeBlanc here? Because Annie gives me 
Ox Force and Gadgetine. The reason why I dropped Gadgetine here is because the item was garbage, but like maybe the Ox Force is good enough, you know, because it makes Alistair buy me like an extra second of time. So we face one of the AP players. So very fitting, right? That at the end of the game, we just face an AP guy. Our Leona ulted their main tank, which is incredible. We probably have to proc the Ox Force first, but she does end up dying. Our Nunu somehow still kicking. Uh, our Soraka just needs to get a triple cast, and holy cow, just like that. Let's look at the other fight. It's in uh, all these Talia players, dude. Just like that, it's a second. Holy cow, who would have predicted that from like stage 6 1 or whatever it was, where af right after we lost? Oh my god, if you got it right, like give let me know, give yourself a pat on the back. I guess I'll know because I'll see the comment, right? Um. But yeah, let's just grab, what do we even want here? We want a tank item, right, for Echo. We're, we don't really need any damage items, so the Guard Breaker, not really useful for us. Maybe the Admin Spat could have been good, because then we could drop LeBlanc. Oh yeah, that's why I didn't drop LeBlanc before, because the Admin Spat was too good, or the Admin Effect. Uh, we have to sell, get a new Echo, drop in Leona 2, Bramble the new Echo, I guess, which is a shame, because we just got items for him. If I played correctly, I would just... Uh, pop the uh, Thieves Gloves off my Leona and put the Sunfire and Bramble on Leona instead. Maybe that's a difference maker. So unlucky that I didn't think to do that fast enough because, I mean, this fight's so like, or the timer was running down, so I really just needed to do anything. But if my Leona had those items, she'd definitely be a lot tankier here. Would I win? Probably not. He's got Mord too. He's got Janna too. Like, Sin just throwing a lot of... He's got Star Guardian spat, but... I'll take the second. We qualified. It's going to be on the weekend, I believe, so I'll be streaming that. I believe it's the 14th and 15th. Twitch.tv slash BunnyMuffinsLOL. I'll see you guys there. That was good enough to be uh, top 160 and rank 120 in terms of, like, the people who signed up. And what crazy ap games holy cow void sin also made it he does the meta snapshots with me so definitely look out for both of us actually um but yeah what a crazy day i'll see you guys on the weekend